What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy, with Hometown Commander. We're back for another video. Today, we are actually going to be trying our first video of a new type. Uh, we're gonna try doing some deck checks here on the channel, and I thought, what better deck to start with than one of my favorite decks that I own? That is my Goreclaw Terror of Cal Seasma Mono Green Midrange Stompy List. Um, this is a list that uh, I just love a lot. Uh, it's a deck that I play a ton, at least I try to play a ton. Uh, we did do a main squeeze episode for this one, but I figure over time as, uh, as we get more sets released and Mikey and I do more videos where we talk about new cards from new sets that we care about. Um, I know that this deck's going to change, so I wanted to put some sort of baseline video out there so you guys can see what's in the deck. Down in the description, uh, there's going to be a link to this deck list if you want to take a look at it. That'll be always the most up-to-date one. Uh, this set, this uh, deck heck, is coming out just right after Kamigawa, that's why you see some Kamigawa cards down here, but of course, Gore is one of the decks that does tend to get up to date at least one or two cards for every set that comes out. So I thought, why not do... Probably all of my main decks right here as Kamigawa comes out, so you guys can see what the baseline is, and then for every new set in the future, we can talk about, you know, what cards that I'm considering adding, what cards I'm considering testing to my main decks. And uh, I would love for you guys to join me on that journey of seeing uh, how my decks evolve. You know, this is something that I really enjoy that I've seen other creators do. And I thought, why not do it for mine? It's cool just not only for y'all to track the process, progress with me, uh, but for me to track the progress myself. So uh, if you have any questions on the deck or you wanna start uh, any conversation about it, you can go down to the comments section or we're gonna link for our Discord in the comment section. Come on over and chat with me, I'm always in there and we can talk about my uh, card choices or or if you have any suggestions, you know, stuff like that. So today we are playing Goreclaw, Terror of Kelsizma for three and a green. We have a legendary creature, Bear. Creature spells you cast with power four or greater Costs two less to cast. Whenever Goreclaw Terror of Calcisma attacks, each creature you control with power four or greater gets plus one, plus one, and trample. So let it turn. And she's a four, three. So we've got two really important texts on our commander. We have the creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast, which is very important to how I built my deck. And the second part is whenever it attacks, uh, each creature I control with power four greater gets plus one, plus one, and trample. So we have a trample enabler on our commander, which is great. Uh, we're, we really do attack a lot with this deck, so that plus one, plus one is going to come in with a lot of handy. Um, but the really important part, and we're going to go into the creatures here first, the really important part about Goreclaw is that first ability. Creatures you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. Now, it's only on cast, so if we... Uh, uh, were to play them somehow and not cast them, uh, we wouldn't get any of the cost reduction. And uh, it's four or greater as they are in our hand or in the graveyard or wherever else they would sit when we go to cast them. Uh, now, Corkla does not get any of her own reduction, but she's going to make a lot of our green creatures a lot cheaper to play and actually a lot more beneficial to play for us. Uh, one of the perfect first examples, and I'm just kind of going to go through this big stack here, we have Questing Beast. Four for four, four for four, with a lot of lines of text. This is a card that gets so much better with Goreclaw because it's only two mana instead of four. Now, I'm going to be looking at every creature in this deck through the lens of if it costs me two less to cast with Goreclaw. There are a few big creatures that are gonna be pretty expensive even with Goreclaw's reduction, but those are gonna be our finishers. Every other creature in this deck is gonna be in that four to six mana range where with that reduction, Gorkal is bringing us down to two to four mana. So really on those latter turns, we can be casting more than one at once. So Questing Beast, I just love. It has haste, it has death touch, it has vigilance, and it has a lot of other really great abilities. Uh, one of my favorite being that comet damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Uh, that's huge, you know, fog effects are popular in the format. Uh, people have ways to uh, give their popper, give their creatures protections and things like that. This just allows us to uh, really make sure we get through for the damage we want to get through. Uh, this will get around your deflecting palms and things like that, which is always great, especially when we're playing uh, some decks that care more about spells, maybe, as opposed to creatures. Next, we have God of Tonal Ronis. It's actually funny. We, we, we hit two of our big combo finishers in a row. So one of our finishers is God of Tonal Ronis. When it comes down, it's going to double the power of each other creature you control until the end of turn, and then those creatures gain Vigilance. 
Uh, we have a couple of effects in this deck. This is what we want to use to win. We're gonna put that, the board out with creatures. We're gonna get them ready to go. Hopefully we have Goreclaw to give us Trample or we have a couple other Trample enablers. And something like this is gonna come down, give us that last push we need. I have completely built Goreclaw in a mid-range, stompy attack fashion. There's no fancy combos. Um, everything is going to be, a, every combo in the deck exists to get creatures out or bump our creatures up and combat is the way we're going to win. Next up, we have one of the best green finishers in the game being Crater Hoof Behemoth. I absolutely love this card. Comes down with haste, but comes in, creatures get plus X, plus X until end of turn, or X is the number of creatures you control. Uh, we have a couple cards that can search us out this, but this is really a way to help us most of the time push through for the win, because even with four or five creatures, getting all of our creatures up to 10 or 11 power, hopefully with that trample from Goreclaw, is going to either knock a few players out or really end the game. Next up, we got Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider. Uh, it's in here because it's 6-6 six, six with Trample and Haste. Uh, I've tried my best to get as many Haste creatures as I can because I think it just makes it better when we're using Goreclaw's Reduction. But this one is just going to... Uh, increase the amount of plus one plus one counters uh, when we put on creatures and it's also going to hose our opponents a little bit on that plus one plus one counter strategy which is always good next card is one of my favorites Coronas the indomitable uh, with gore claws reduction this is going to come down for just one green mana death touch indestructible and it can't attack or block unless you control a creature with power four or greater but to be honest that's going to be a lot of our creatures so we don't really have to worry about that and uh, Ronus does have that pump on the bottom so we can always pump up those uh some of our mana dorks that are really small uh, if we don't have any creatures out. One of my favorite new creatures from uh, the newer sets, Frog Hemoth, is really fun in this deck. He comes down for just three mana. It's going to start exiling some cards from our opponent's graveyards. This is a way to a little bit hose some graveyard, graveyard strategies, but we don't have too many of those. And it gets plus one, plus one counters if we can get rid of creatures, and it gains its life if we can get rid of non-creatures. Uh, Frog Hemoth is probably going to hit for six or seven most of the time, which means we can get rid of those cards for whatever trampled through, and it's just going to either gain us life, which is always great, especially in a deck where we don't really care about gaining life, and the plus one, plus one counters are just going to continue to make Frog Hemoth hit harder. One of my favorite green creatures from the last few years, uh, last year, Elder Gargaroth from 21. Um, this card just has, it just feels like just like Questing Beast to me. So much text on the card, comes down for three with Goreclaw, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and whenever we attack or block, we either, we either get a 3-3, three, three, gain three life, or draw a card, which is huge. Um, I think Elder Gargaroth is one of those targets I really like getting because it's a good blocker, it's a good attacker, and uh, just generally tends to get the job done. Next up, we have Kadam of the East Tree, Great creature to allow us to double up on some of our creatures. Uh, if we play a creature, we can potentially get a creature or land or other permanent from our hand with less CMC on the battlefield for free. That's huge. We can cast creature, maybe put an enchantment down from our hand. Cast creature, maybe put a land from our hand down on the battlefield. It's just going to make it good, and it is a 6-6 six, six with reach, just as a good blocker since we don't have a ton of flyers in green. Next up, we have Nylea Keen-Eyed. Helps a Gore Claw with that minus one reduction to creature spells casting costs, which is great. This gives us a secondary uh, reduction out if uh, if we run if if Gore Claw becomes too expensive or it gets getting rid of Carnage Tyrant. One of my favorite green creatures of all time. Great in standard, great in commander. Six mana, four with Gore Claw out. Trample and Hexproof, which is going to make it tough to deal with and it can't be countered. I really like this one, comes down for four mana and just generally tends to do a really good job at being a good beater. Next up, we have <laughs> two of our fight fight enablers. We have Thorn Mammoth. Whenever it comes down, another creature under the battlefield under control, we get to fight up to one target creature you don't control. A lot of our creatures are going to be huge, so giving the ability of our creatures to fight things is going to be really good. Thorn Mammoth comes down four or five mana with Gore Cloud, but this is one of those creatures I don't mind paying the full seven for because when it comes down, it can fight something problematic. Or after this comes out, everything else that comes in can... Uh, can 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 trigger Thorn Mammoth to fight. So if we can give this guy uh, Death Touch or Indestructible, it just makes it really fun to fight other things. Next up, we have Kogla, the Titan Ape. Comes down for four mana with Gore Cloud. Another big fighter. It's going to come down as a 7-6 and probably kill most of our opponent's creatures. So it's really good. And then whenever it attacks, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment, defending player controls. That's huge. Just allows us to get some of those pesky enchantments off the battlefield. We're playing the other Nylea, mainly just for the trample enabling. Um, Gore Claw is not guaranteed to stay on the board forever, so we want to make sure that we have some other way to enable Trample. Next up, we have a Shia. Shia is really good uh, if we have 
four lands in our hand, Ashaya will actually come down for three from our hand. That star star is still calculated in your hand, which makes the reduction really nice and makes it a lot cheaper to come down. Then the other great thing is our creatures become lands when uh, Ashaya is down. So that's gonna get us around uh, things like Cyclonic Rift and all those kind of things. Our lands then, our creatures then become lands and we can still tap them for mana and get around some other effects. It does say non-token creatures, so any of the tokens that we create aren't gonna become lands, but everything else is. Next up, we have one of the best cards we've gotten in the last year, and that's Old Gnawbone. It's good to get a flyer in green. This one is gonna be just five mana when Gore Claws down, but giving us the ability to get treasures anytime we deal damage in combat is absolutely giant in this deck. This deck works so well when we have a lot of mana that we can spend, especially since all of our finishers are a little more expensive. If we can put a couple creatures down and then put one of our finishers down, it's going to go a long way. Next up, we have another one of our finishers and raise four runners. Same thing, uh, kind of kind of like a mini Crater Hoof when it comes down. All of our creatures get plus two, plus two, Vigilance, and Trample. So the good part here is we don't, if we don't have Gore Claw out, and raise four runners is going to come down and give all of our creatures Trample, which is great, which is going to continue to push push our strategy forward. We have one of our uh, mana dorks here, Llanowar Elves, one of my personal favorites. This is the pretty Dominaria promo printing, one of my favorites. And uh, it's just here to help us a little bit in that early game, try to get Gore Claw out as soon as possible. We play, I think, just one creature from Ikoria, and that's uh, Gem Razor. Gem Razor is really good. The mutate cost actually gets reduced by Gore Claw, so it's going to just mutate for two green mana. Reach and Trample, and then whenever it mutates, Destroy target artifact or enchantment upon control. So this is good. I kind of look at this as another copy of uh, Crows and Grip or Beast Within or something like that. If we can get it on our main phase and use it, it actually does a really good job. And this can mutate on something like Llanowar Elves and still make it very useful for Gore Claw's effect. So Gem Razor does a really good job at most of the time mutating down on our really small on our smaller creatures and just making them more beneficial. Next up we have Bellowing Tangle Worm. This gives all our green creatures Intimidate, which is most of the time gonna make them unblockable or make them very tough to block for our opponents. That's really good. This guy comes down to three mana with Gore Cloud. Next up we have Whisper of the Wilds, another one of our mana dorks. This one is gonna cast is gonna tap for two mana most of the time, which is exactly what we want. We want as much green mana as possible. Next up we have Vengevine Haste. Two mana when Gore Claws out, and whenever we cast a spell, if it's the second creature spell we cast this turn, we get to, to bring Vengevine back from the graveyard, which is great if it gets removed or we need to discard it for some reason, we can probably get it back pretty easily. Next up, we have Sorok, the Hunt Caller, from Dragons of Tarkir. Formidable is going to do a lot of great stuff for us and giving one of our creatures haste when we're playing big creatures. There's a lot of turns where you can play something like this and maybe a Galtar or one of those big creatures on the same turn, and then you get to give it haste. And it does a lot of good as far as pushing pressure on your opponents. Next up, we got a creature that's moved in and out of the deck a couple times, uh, but I think it just makes it uh, really good if you can hit the right things. And that's Thicket Elemental. It's going to come down for three with Gore Claw out. We can kick it for one in the green, and if we do reveal cards on the top till we hit a creature, and we put that creature on the battlefield. I've hit Crater Hoofs this way. I've hit huge creatures, and it just makes that five mana, which we would have paid for Thicket Elemental normally, really worth it if we can hit anything that's even over five mana itself. You know, any creature in this deck, if we hit it off Thicket Elemental, is going to be really useful. Next up, we have Ovenwald Oddity from Crimson Vow. 4-4 four, for four, 4, Trample Haste, only two mana when Gore Claws out, which is perfect. And on that backside, it's going to give all of our creatures... Um, all of our creatures getting plus one, plus one, and Trample and Haste is even better. Uh... We don't normally transform over Wild Oddity, but even to have it down for two mana is great. Next up is a creature that is really great from Strixhaven, and that's Wandering Archaic. Uh, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, they may pay two. If they don't, you get a copy of it. I've ramped this way. I've bounced things back to people's hands this way. This is one of those cards that's gonna soft lock our opponents just a little bit and hopefully give us enough time to keep our creatures rolling. Next up, we've got Yeva, or Yeva, or Yeva, Natchez. Nature's Herald, Flash, and other green creatures we control have, or other green spells we have have Flash. This is great because not every creature in this deck has haste. So sometimes uh, if we think our opponents have board wipes, it can be kind of scary to run our entire board out there and get it going with. I've added Yeva and another Planeswalker to hopefully help us cast even Goreclaw or our creatures on our opponent's end steps. That way they're ready to go and attack when they're on our turn. Another great uh, finisher here, Decimator of the Provinces from Shadows of Innistrad. When it comes in, plus two, plus two, and trample until end of turn. 
most of the time that emerge cost isn't going to cost very much if we can get rid of a, a decently mid-range creature on our board probably brings it down to uh you know four or five mana which is perfect for that effect similar to the end raise uh, forerunners type thing another great finisher and we really want a couple finishers so that we can see them consistently loyal guardian the beginning of combat if i control my commander put a plus one plus one counter in each creature control this meshes with Voron Collects, just makes all of our creatures bigger, and uh, it's just going to make our board better. Another one of our Mana Dorks here, Elysian Carolid, same thing, add one mana of any color. In this case, it's still going to be green no matter what, and if we control a creature with power four or greater, add two, two green mana. Just great. Uh, I tried my best to play two mana mana uh, dorks where we can get more than one mana of it, of it over the one mana ones, because more often than not... I am playing this turn two or three and playing this immediately the next turn, which means this is just going to continue to cast for more mana. And our last creature, besides these guys down here, is Thunderfoot Bailoth. As long as we control our commander, it gets plus two, plus two, and all our creatures get plus two, plus two, and trample. Just going to continue to make our entire board better comes down for four mana. So the two new Kamiyawa creatures we're trying out. We have Springleaf Avenger. This guy has ninjutsu, and that ninjutsu costs will get cut down with Gore Claw. So it actually only ninjutsu for two, or we can hard cast it for three. It says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Man, there's a lot of creatures that once they die, we don't necessarily have other creatures that do the same thing, or there's a lot of great creatures we have. This can get back artifacts, this can get back enchantments, this can get back a lot of really good things. Uh, I think it'll do well since how much we'll be attacking and how much will be unblocked. And the second, always great to get another dragon in the deck that flies. We have Kuro, the Boundless Sky, flying Death Touch, and when it dies, we either get to put three land cards into our hand, and we have some pretty important land cards other than basics, or we get that XX Spirit token, where X is the number of lands I control. Uh, that's going to be huge, because, of course, Gorklaw just cares about those creatures having four or greater power, so that, that Spirit token is probably going to be big enough that it's going to start attacking. I just want to really quickly show off, uh, Michael and I made our own sleeves here and we put them on, each put them on our main deck. So of course, Gorklaw had to get our hometown commander sleeves. Uh, these are just the Dragon Shield custom sleeves. I have to say, I really enjoy them. We played with them a bunch of times and there was no other deck that deserved these sleeves, but Gorklaw. So let's get into our sorceries. First off, we have Triumph of the Hordes. This is everyone's favorite green finisher. And in this deck, it just makes it even better because our creatures are even bigger. Uh, this card most of the time ends the game, if not takes out most of the players at the table. And that's what we want. We want to take out our biggest threat first and keep walking around the table. Next up, we have a Nature's Lore. Although we don't have any dual lands in this deck, Nature's Lore is still a really good card at two mana to ramp us out and try to get our commander out quicker. Next up, we have one of my favorite finishers in the deck, Finale Devastation. If we can dump enough mana into this, we can go get any creature we want. Not bad to stack a Crater Hoof on top of that and make some really big attack turns. Uh, that is a card that I'm definitely happy I was able to put into the Staple Binder so that I could get it into this deck. Next up, we have a three visits. Same thing. No forced uh, cards that aren't basics, but hey, two mana ramp spells is good. We're playing the Kadamas Reach because we want access to as much ramp as possible. Same thing with this rampant growth. We really want to hit a ramp spell or a one of those mana dorks as often as we can in our opening hand so that we can keep going. Next up, we have Abundant Growth, a card that really I hadn't really considered for this deck, but with me playing this deck on Arena and having a lot of experience with it, I found Abundant Growth to be really good. You choose land or non-land, reveal off the top until you reveal one of that type and you put it into your hand. This can go get us an extra land, turn one or turn two, if that's what we need. Later in the game, it can go get us a creature to cast if we're running out of cards in our hand. And the last card is Natural Order. Every creature in this deck with one or two... Um, aside our green which means we can sack one of our mana dorks and go get a crater hoof off of this we can go get one of our finishers we can go get a gnaw bone if we have a good attack and we want some mana and i think it just really benefits our strategy uh and i don't even mind sacrificing those creatures most of the time uh we're playing beast within great green removal as well as Co uh, and grip we are playing Heroic Intervention, great card to protect our board if we need to. And then we're playing Worldly Tutor. Why wouldn't we be playing Worldly Tutor? We uh, want to be getting those pretty green creatures and getting them quickly. Uh, a lot of times I, I end up tutoring for uh, not necessarily always Crater Hoof. I really find myself tutoring for Gnawbone or Vorinclex or Ronus. Just stuff that's going to push where I'm at for it. I look at my hand, I look at the board, what do I need? And... Uh, just allow Worldly Tutor to kind of fit my strategy. For enchantments, we have Exploration. This is a card I just recently added to my Staple Binder, so this got put in here. This is just great because if we have a pretty heavy opening hand and Exploration, we can get 
some lands out quickly. We have Defense of the Heart, one of my pet cards. I absolutely love this card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls three or more creatures, sack it and go get any two creatures. Any two creatures in this deck is devastating most of the time. I can go get absolutely anything I want to, and I can find some pretty fun combinations of creatures. Very rarely does Defense of the Heart go and get me a Crater Hoof. Most of the time this goes and gets me, you know, creature cards like Gnawbone or Vorinclex, just things that are going to set up my strategy and keep going forward. Uh, very rarely do I see Defense of the Heart at the start of the game, but it's not a bad card to keep if we do. Next up, we have another piece of removal, Lignify. What a great card. It's just going to help us lock down either people's commanders or some problematic creatures. We got Utopia Sprawl. We're trying to play as much quick ramp as we can, and Utopia Sprawl is one of them. Comes down, just doubles our forest, which is great for one mana. We've got a Natural Growth. This is a card that I've seen end some games for this deck. When you have enough creatures out and they get doubled, especially with this Trample uh, or the other Trample enablers, uh, it really helps to end games. Next up, we have Song of the Dryads. Another piece of removal, especially nasty on people's commanders, making them forest lands. Next up, we got Gar Garrick's Uprising. This is not only a draw card, but it's also a Trample enabler. Uh, this card puts in a lot of work when you can find it. Uh, when, of course, whenever a creature comes in, you draw a card. And if it comes down and you have a creature, it draws a card. Otherwise, it just gives everything trample, which is great. So no matter whether we have Gorklaw or not, we get that trample. Uh, we got Growing Rights of Itlamok, another great card I was able to add to this deck over the last year with my Staple Binder. When it comes in, we get to look at the top four, get a creature. At the end of the turn, if we control four or more, we get to turn it over. And we get a Gaia's Cradle on the backside, which is always great. It's never bad to have access to more green mana so we can play more creatures during our turns. Uh, we have Kenrich Transformation, another piece of removal. I really like the enchantment removal. I think it doesn't get played very often, and it's a lot harder for decks to take this kind of stuff out uh, easily. And getting rid of something's abilities is just good. This doesn't just hit commanders, this hits a lot of things. One of my favorite cards, especially in this deck, due to how many creatures we play, is In Search of Greatness. This allows us on our upkeep to cast a permanent from our hand with CMC equal to one plus the highest one on the battlefield other than greatness. This is great because the turn we put Gorklaw down, the next turn we can cast something with five for free. If not, we just start riding the train up. It's two green mana. If not, it's a scry on every upkeep, which in a green deck where you're not drawing a ton of cards anyway is great just to make sure we always have gas coming. Then we have Sylvan Anthem, one of my favorite cards from Mono Horizons. All of our creatures get plus one, plus one, and whenever a green creature enters the battlefield, we scry one. This is great if you have the Great Henge and this out at the same time. It allows you to really make sure those things you're drawing off the Henge are going to be really helpful. Next up, we have Elemental Bond. Same thing as that first part of Garrick's Uprising. Just going to draw us cards. We want to get as much card draw as we can uh, because we don't have a ton of it naturally. Then we have Wolf Willow Haven and Wild Growth. Same thing. We're going to enchant our lands. We're going to get more green mana. This is just going to keep us pushing forward. Um, and really the goal here is to get Gorklaw out turn three, if not turn four, for sure. And all of these enchantment ramps cards are going to do the same thing. Uh, for the artifacts, we have a Sword of the Feast and Famine. One of my favorite cards that I've added in here. Uh, untapping our lands is great. Leaves, allows us to leave up protection or get some more creatures down onto the battlefield. But uh, more often than not, that protection from black and green can lead us to get some really good attacks in. Next up, we have the best green card in the deck, the Great Henge. This, this card does so much for our deck. It does so much to enable our strategies. Allows us to get some rich mana. It's going to come down pretty cheap most of the time. Get a plus and plus encounter and draw a card in each of our creatures. And hopefully going to keep our turns going so we can cast more and more creatures. We have a green emerald medallion. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say how long it took me to put this card into this deck, but it just helps. This, Gorklaw and Nylea out at the same time, tend to bring every creature in our deck down to just green pips, and that's great. Uh, next up, we have a Shadow Spear. This is good. It just gives us Trample and Lifelink. Lifelink's never bad to have, especially when you're in those sluggy matchups where you're attacking a lot. Put this on a Galta, put this on a uh, big creature, and just start swinging. Then we have Dowsing Dagger. This is one of my favorite newer cards that I've started to put in my combat decks. When it comes down, you give an opponent of your choice two zero two plants, gives it uh, plus two plus one, and when you deal combat damage to a player, you transform it. On the backside, it's a land that taps for three mana of any color. So it just becomes a um, just becomes a, 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 a you know a, a lotus enchantment. 
or an old Lotus artifact, which is great. And, and I don't even mind giving people two zero two plants at Defender because worst case scenario, they're just gonna block two off of my trample. Uh, we're playing three Planeswalker cards and I love all three of them. We're playing Vivian Monsters Advocate. This minus two is a combo in this deck. Uh, you can Galta into a Crater Hoof. You can Galta into almost any creature in the deck. Um, and you can do a lot of really good things. The plus one isn't bad, just to give you a, a uh, token to block. Uh, we don't have a ton of flying creatures, so putting that reach 3-3 three, three down is really good. And being able to look and play creatures from the top of our library means that we're going to make sure we have a hand. Nissa, who shakes the world. Almost every land in our deck is a forest. There are very few examples. So this is going to come down and basically double the amount of mana we have. And if we can ever ultimate her, we'll never have problems with mana again. And Vivian Champion of the Wilds coming in giving all our creatures flash and just allowing us to give some creatures vigilance. Um, I like Vivian a lot because we can safely put Goreclaw down on somebody else's end step and get to be able to use it uh, when it comes back to our turn. And then we're going to end off with our lands. We are playing mostly basic lands, but we're playing a couple utility lands. We have Besaidu from the new set. This is an absolute staple to me in green. It fits this deck so well, being able to nuke an, an enchantment artifact or non-basic land off the battlefield for you know one green mana most of the time is gonna be really good. And the best part here is it uh, will get around some of those counter spell type decks really well, and it's just gonna be a good piece. And it's also a land if we need it. We have Nykthos. Nykthos does so much work in this deck when we have a lot of creatures out, a lot of enchantments, a lot of planeswalkers, a lot of permanents. This is just gonna allow us to add a ton of mana. Uh, having that down uh, is never, this is never a bad thing to see in your opening hand if you have a lot of lands around it because we know we're gonna be able to build into it. We have Yavi Mao, Cradle of Growth. Uh, the main reason this is in here is because we're playing just a few utility lands. Uh, this is gonna make every land on the battlefield of forest, but it's also gonna make every land on our battlefield of forest, which means Nissa is gonna be able to interact with all of them. Um, this is also really good just to if I ever choose to go into uh, forest walk strategies, which I don't ever see, that would be good for that, but I doubt that. We have a Castle Garenbrig, one of my favorite model green lands that has been printed. Uh, allows us to put four mana in it to get six, uh, and that we can use, only use that to catch creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. Well, that's fine, because with the with the reduction Gorkhal gives us most of the time, we're really going to be casting creatures for those green pips, and so that is great for that. And then the last of the utility lands... Uh, should be Lair of the Hydra. Uh, if not, nope, we do. We do have one more. Uh, Lair of the Hydra, this card is great. It allows us to get another creature if we need it. If we can put four into it, we get that benefit from Goreclaw. And it just gives us another creature uh, if the board gets white to block with. And then we have Mosswort Bridge. Uh, I really like this card. I think it's really beneficial on our list to allow us to uh, be able to play a uh, trying for the hordes if we hit it for free we can hit a lot of things and having total power 10 or greater it's going to be very easy with this deck to get to uh, so that means that whatever we cast we're only going to cast for one green uh, plenty of times i've gotten crater hoofs off of this i've gotten uh trying for the hordes i've gotten so many great things for one green mana that isn't bad and then we are playing about 28 basic forests uh, at some point, I would love to upgrade these all to the Kamigawa Basics, but I have lots of the Zendikar, the Zendikar lands, so we are running Zendikar Forests. But guys, that is Goreclaw, Terror of Cal Sisma. Like, Sisma. like I said, this is my main deck. This is the deck I love the most. This is the deck that I find myself with tinkering with the most and um, truly, really enjoying. Uh, this is one of those lists to me that uh, I can rotate those new creatures in when they come out, and I just really enjoy the process of uh, really seeing this deck get better. You know, when this deck first got built, I didn't own a Finale Devastation. I didn't own a Growing Rights of Bitlamock. And over time, due to my Staple Binder, uh, I've been able to really upgrade this deck, make it a lot more fun, and I've taken this to shops, and even though it's a straight combat deck, um, it's done a lot of work to... Uh, push my strategy forward. Uh, the one thing that I want to make sure I'm doing and I'll be doing in the future when we do these videos about cards we're considering is um, I have two cards that did not make the cut this time that I want to just keep in my head for the next time I update this deck. Uh, Bow of Nylea and Glorious Sunrise. Bow of Nylea of course gives all our creatures death touch. When we have Trample that's a really good combo. Uh, this is in there more for the death touch than it is anything else but I think it's still really good. And then Glorious Sunrise 
just a way to give us uh, a lot of different effects. Mana if we need it, drawing a card, life, or that plus one, plus one, and trample to the end of the turn. Kind of a mini, uh, a mini overrun effect pairs really well with Goreclaw and that kind of thing. Well, guys, please tell me in the comments what you think of Goreclaw. If you have any suggestions, throw them down in the comments as far as cards to add. Um, this is a deck that, uh, like I said, I enjoy playing a ton, and it sees a lot of play in our play group, and this has been a deck that I've grown even more in love with taking it to a shop and playing against some more control lists and things like that, because I think it tends to catch a lot of people off guard. Uh, it's one of those decks that once it gets going, it becomes very tough to stop, and uh, I think it just makes the deck more fun to play. You're, you're, you're trying to build your board up in that mid-range, attack your right opponents, and hopefully win the game uh, with a Triumph or a Crater Hoof or something pretty easily, but I've never found this deck to have a problem with dealing that full 120 damage if we have to. I just hope that we don't have to. But thank you guys so much for watching the first video in our series, hopefully, of showing off our main decks. And pretty soon I'm going to be showing off um, my staple binder as well, so you guys can see what I can what I consider to be staples, the cards that I use in a lot of my decks. And uh we're going to hopefully be tracking that in the future too, what I'm adding, what I'm taking out, so you guys can join me along in my, I don't know, I'll call it a journey. It is a journey playing Magic, and uh, I really enjoy uh, what collecting has brought for me. So there you go, guys. Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma. Like I said, link to the deck is in the description, and we will catch you guys next time.